how can we solve p of x equals x cubed minus 8x squared plus 5x plus 14 equals 0? You're probably a little stumped as to how we can go about solving this, so let's take a step back to something that's hopefully more familiar to you. Let's take a look at this example. Solve 2x squared minus 11x plus 5 equals 0. This is a lower degree polynomial equation involving a quadratic, which has its highest degree term as the x squared term. Can you think of a way to solve for x? We could use the quadratic formula, but for our purposes, we're more interested in solving by factoring. Once we've factored this trinomial, we can identify the values of x that will cause the expression to evaluate to zero. To factor the trinomial, we look at the leading coefficient, which is the coefficient on the highest degree term, the x squared term, and multiply it with the constant term to give us our magic number. 2 times 5 gives us 10. Now we look to the coefficient on the x term. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us our magic number, 10, and add to give us the coefficient on the x term, negative 11. I'm going to jump right to negative 1 and negative 10, but if that's not obvious to you, you could write out all the factor pairs of 10, both positive and negative, and sift through them until you come up with one that works. Now, we'll use this factor pair to split the negative 11x term into two smaller terms, negative 10x and negative 1x. Note that the order of the negative 10x and negative x terms could be swapped, and we would still come out with the same answer, albeit with slightly different work to get there. Now from the pair of terms on the left, we pull out the greatest common factor, which is 2x, since both coefficients are even and both have an x. This gives us 2x times x minus 5. From the pair of terms on the right, we pull out the common factor of negative 1, which leaves us with negative 1 times x minus 5. Notice that the expressions in both brackets are the same. This is a sign that we're on the right track. The last step to complete the factoring is to write the expression in the matching brackets on its own and multiply by the coefficients that were on the matching brackets, giving us 2x minus 1 times x minus 5. From here, we can determine the values of x that will set each factor to 0 and solve the equation. Let's start with 2x minus 1. We set it equal to 0 and begin solving for x. We add 1 to both sides to get 2x equals 1 and then divide by 2 to get x equals 1 half. Doing the same with x minus 5, we add 5 to both sides to get x equals 5. The two values of x that cause our polynomial to evaluate to 0 are 1 half and 5. These are the roots of our polynomial. Take note of how they are related to the factors of the polynomial. Look at the factor of 2x minus 1, which has the form bx minus a. Its corresponding root is a over b, or 1 over 2. Now look at the factor of x minus 5, which has the form x minus a, corresponding to a root of a, or 5. If you want another simple way to think about it, just think what value of x makes each factor 0. We can see that the factor 2x minus 1 equals 0 when x is 1 half, and the factor of x minus 5 equals 0 when x is 5. Hopefully this has been a nice refresher on how to find the roots of a quadratic function by factoring, but what if the function is cubic or quartic, meaning degree 3 or 4? Look at this example. Solve p of x equals x cubed minus 8x squared plus 5x plus 14 equals 0 from the beginning of the video. We want to apply the same approach of factoring to find the roots. Can you think of a way to factor it? Probably not yet, as this is where knowledge of the factor theorem becomes necessary. This cubic does actually factor quite nicely down to x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 7. Don't worry if you don't know how to do that yet. You shouldn't because we haven't taught you. We're just jumping ahead to show you where we're heading with all of this. Remember we observed factors of the form x minus a correspond to roots at x equals a. With that in mind, the factor of x plus 1 can be rewritten as x minus negative 1, and the roots can be found by inspection. The three roots from these three factors are negative 1, 2, and 7. 
Again, these roots can be found more simply by asking ourselves what value of x makes this factor zero. We can see that the factor of x plus one will be zero when x is negative one, the factor of x minus two will be zero when x is two, and the factor of x minus seven will be zero when x is seven. In the next video lesson, we're going to look at the factor theorem, which will give us the tools we need to factor cubics like this example here. So stay tuned.